And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're talking about a new game from Asmodee and Bombix called Gentlemen Thieves. Um, although it could be called Gentlemen and Lady Thieves, apparently you are a fancy person and, uh, and you rob for the fun of it. Or you pretend to be a gentleman and you rob. Basically, you and up to, let's see how many players it takes, I think it's five. Up to five players, two to five players, two is kind of eh. Uh, two to five players are working together or not working together to rob a variety of places, the bank, the coach house, etc., and to get as much money, And but only one person can win, so you need to work together with the right people at the right times. Let's take a look. The box itself is part of the game here. Uh, you just lay it down like this and it lays flat and in this box you'll have tokens that you'll draw from in this spot and then here you have the five different thieves who are involved and over here you'll put some tokens. Now in this game there's a pile of tokens and each of these tokens is one of five colors which match the five different thieves who are out here and also each token has one of five types on it. There's a stethoscope, a mask, a lamp. You can see some of the um, there. Now there's five locations out here and some of the locations have a special feature of them. For example, the bank has two gold at it. Uh, this one here has a secret tunnel at it and that's basically it for now. But there's also some other special tokens that can be placed. At the beginning of each game, players are going to be given one of the five folks who they are going to be with a color and a symbol to match them and they're going to take that person and that's secretly who you are for the remainder of the game. And then the first round begins. Now the first round of the game, one person has to split these people up into two teams basically. So they can say red and black go together, green, purple, and yellow are together. They can do what they want. The next player will take and then this will keep going until a burglary happens. The next person takes one of these tokens, let's say they take this stethos black stethoscope, and they will place it on any of the five locations. So they, maybe they put it right here. Now, once they do that, they will immediately replace that one from the box. Then they have a choice. They can draw a random one from the box and put that out anywhere they want, or they can play one of their clovers here, one of their luck tokens, to do something special. And we'll talk about that in a moment. The whole point of this game is for a burglary, a burglary to occur. And that's going to happen. As you're placing these tokens on the different locations, you can never put more than three of the, or you can never put more than two of the same items. So for example, there's two masks here. I can't put any more masks at this location. But I can add other types of equipment and eventually I'm going to have all five types of equipment at this location. See here for example, all five are there and there's two of those. As soon as that happens, then a burglary occurs. Now, when this happens, we look at the teams. Now if you remember, the teams were red and black, and in case you forgot, it's right there. Red and black against yellow, green, and purple. So we count the tokens of each type. Here's the red and black and the yellow, green, and purple tokens. There are more of the yellow, green, and purple tokens, so they are the ones who commit this crime. All the tokens are turned upside down to show money or goods or what have you, and then they're split evenly amongst the team that won. So here, green, purple, and yellow, even though not every color was there, and then they're placed over here on top of that thief. So they would each get two, green, purple, and yellow, and then I have an extra one, and that one's just discarded. We won't be needing that one for this game. After that happens, then three more tokens are added to this spot. The next person has to pick basically how they're going to split up the teams and then another round begins. And you keep going until you draw the Brigadier token 
from the draw pile. He's in the last six. When that happens, the game is over. And each person reveals who they are and whoever has the highest amount of things that they gotten from different crimes as the time goes by is the winner of the game. Now, there's a couple other things that you can do to keep the game interesting, and that's by using these tokens here. One thing you can do is you can move one of the two manhole locations, and when you do that, you basically say those two locations that have the manhole on them, for example, this one and this one, are essentially the same location at this point in time. So you quick check to see if there's all five goods and so on and so forth. There's also a lock token, and that lock token basically says nobody can take anything from this location while the lock is there. And finally, there's the bank has these two extra tokens at it. When you rob the bank, everybody, uh, you just basically add these two to the amount of loot that's taken. And that's not finally, because there also is a carriage, and when you take a carriage and you move a carriage to a location, then th that location has one of its tokens removed and put at the location where the lock token is. So that's all the different special things that you can do. You go back and forth. You're trying to figure out who other people are. Make sure you're on the right team that robs and whoever has most tokens at the end is the winner. I love the box for this. I love these magnetic boxes which open up and snap shut and has a great insert. Everything fits in. The components here are very high quality. The, the only argument I suppose would be that the different colors would be indistinguishable to someone who's colorblind. Something that companies should be constantly thinking of. But anyhow, uh, the game itself is very interesting. Uh, especially you, as the game progresses, I think it should always be pretty obvious who is what color at a certain point. You don't know at the beginning, and you can guess wrong. I've guessed wrong before, uh, but for the most part, I think the best position is to be on the team of two, and then have that team really just do well at a house, because splitting something uh, in you know, from one person to the other. Now, when you play with less than five players, you will have computer players, I call them, in the mix, players that no one knows who that color is. But that kind of, you figure out as time goes by. But again, you want to be in that, that smaller group. However, the smaller group has a harder time winning. So you have to use everything in your power, and especially using those luck tokens at the right moment will really help you out. Now, those are a tiebreaker at the end of the game, and it is fairly feasible for ties to happen in this game. So you have to keep that in mind, too. But... For the most part, it's playing those tokens. Uh, first you play one that you can see, then you play one totally randomly, and where are you gonna put them? Are you going to, when you put it, you have to consider the color. Am I gonna make my team win at a certain location? But also the item, am I gonna close something down? Sometimes you'll even win something for somebody else just so that they don't get as much, and hopefully that the teams might be arranged to help better you. Now the deduction element isn't as high. Like I said, you figure out people as they go throughout the game. Um, which is good. I mean, I, I like the fact. If, if everyone knew what everyone's color was, it wouldn't be nearly as fun of a game. But it's fun to try to figure that out. But at the same time, I don't think you have too much wiggle room to do something that doesn't help yourself just to throw people off the scent. It seems like it's best just to help yourself out as much as you possibly can. It's light. The game isn't that complicated. It's very light, the, all the different cool special effects, the different tokens, the locks, the, the manhole covers, the, the connect the things, the, the, that's cool, but those aren't used as frequently as I want, but at the same time, the box here says that this is a 45 minute game, and I think my games, we got them down to 30 minutes. They're not long at all. They're interesting, uh, there's a lot of moving things around, and you know, it's just, there's no luck other than the tiles drawn. So. And, and you can even play with less luck by playing with a special set of tiles so that when you start them all out on the board, there's exact same amount of colors and exact same amount of types. So a very interesting game. I think one where you try to have a light deduction element, knowing what other people are, and at the same time, a good maneuvering, I think would be a good term for this, maneuvering yourself into the best position to get the most money. Gentlemen thieves. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at FunAgain.com. Hey, Tom, the door. Go shut it. Yeah. Yeah.